But let's dive into today's action with our first guest. Joining us now is Lori Cavasina from RBC Capital Markets. Lori, um, NASDAQ having a strong day here. Jobless claims down. Is good news good news? Well, I think at least for today it is. Um, I do think it depends on what lens you're looking through. If you're a proponent of the mega cap growth stocks, if you're a proponent of the broadening out thesis. Um, I think what we've really seen is there's been an ongoing debate about what do you do with these big cap tech stocks? Uh, the MAG7 comes up in just about uh, every meeting, I would say, that we have and continues to be a source of our income and call volume. And what we've really noticed is that the broadening out in the U.S. equity market that we saw at the end of last year really happened as people got more optimistic about the Fed. As 10-year Treasury yields peaked and moved lower, that really seemed to breathe some life into the idea that this market could see a transition in leadership. And, of course, we've seen yields headed back in the other direction. There's been a lot of talk about how Fed expectations for a March cut are too aggressive. We've been seeing a lot of pushback. So it makes sense to me that this broadening out of the market that we saw is taking a bit of a breather here to start the year. Yeah, to your point, uh, the S&P shot about 4,700 in early December. has been bumping around there since. And meanwhile, the Russell 2000 is right about where it was a year ago and two years ago and three years ago. So yeah. if things aren't continuing to broaden out, what do you do with small and mid caps here? So I think the broadening out trade, even if it does take a bit of a pause, I do still think that's an interesting theme on the year. And I do think small caps are actually a really interesting place to be this year. So we actually give them an edge over large cap, even though, you know, from Frankly, it felt, John, like everybody I talked to in my December meetings was bullish on small cap. And so we looked at all our data and we said, you know, there's still room for the small cap trade to run. But just the level of conversation, it, it may actually need this pause to digest just because it had become so overly consensus at the end of the year. We'll see if it's the pause that refreshes. Meanwhile, you guys at RBC like utilities here. Sounds like while somewhat optimistic for 2024, a bit defensive. Why utilities? So it's interesting. You know, we we made a number of changes. This was really the only thing that we took up to a new overweight. We've been neutral utilities for quite some time. When we got to the end of the year, we found that valuations had improved on our work for the sector. We also found that there are not a lot of sectors seeing upward earnings revisions in the market right now, at least in the S&P 500. But utilities is one that has returned to slightly positive revision territory. So we liked those two dynamics. The other thing, frankly, John, is that when I look at my sentiment work, whether it's the CFTC data on institutions positioning in U.S. equity futures, or the AAII net bull bear data point that comes out every week, a survey, um, we're basically seeing indications that this market should have a bit of a pullback. And so we liked the idea of having a bit of defensiveness to start the year, really just to get a little bit of insurance in the portfolio. And we also just thought even on its own, utilities was making a stronger case for itself than it had, say, six, nine months ago. It maybe speaks to this kind of in-between sense. Things are pretty good, but how long can they stay that way? I think you say that utilities uh, as a sector tend to outperform when 10-year yields are falling. We do see that. I mean, there are actually other sectors that show a greater tendency to do that. Um, so things like communication services, consumer discretionary communication services, of course, has a lot of tech in it, but also has a lot of consumer oriented uh, names in it as well. And so we actually upgraded the consumer discretionary sector, which we'd been underweight last year. We actually pulled that up to a market weight. And again, the valuations are sort of reasonable here. It's not a super cheap sector, but we do like the idea that if interest rates come down a little bit, and I don't think that's what we're seeing in the market right now, but that that is in the forecast for later this year, um, that is a sector that traditionally should benefit a bit. So with both the utilities upgrade and the discretionary upgrade, we really gave ourselves a little bit more exposure to the idea that if we get a little bit more moderation in interest rates later on in the year, we'll be able to capture that with some of these sector moves.